so last week or so I posted a photograph I believe on Instagram which immediately reposted it to Facebook of these blocks that I made many years ago for uh, sign bars sign plates okay and uh, somebody took me to task I think they were a little confused I think they thought I really made my own gauge blocks well I didn't uh, but there was a little bit of a discussion on what's faster now you have to understand uh, many years ago and here's a live look at these gauge blocks here uh, in the studio I call them gauge blocks these are like uh, preset angle blocks would probably be a better word for them all set for a five inch sign bar or sign plate well as a mold maker I was constantly grinding draft okay so we're gonna look at a couple different things about angles and setting angles today now for you guys that have a lot of experience this is probably a uh, uh, going to be a pretty simple video for you, a simple lesson, but maybe for a new guy in the trade, uh, I'm just going to show you how we used to do things in the mold making industry. Uh, now, I'm not sure how many people are actually cutting their draft and their electrodes or grinding it anymore if they're just using CNC's to, to do everything, okay? But uh, we used to grind a lot of graphite, and uh, you end up setting up so many angles so many times, you just end up making your own uh, blocks and here's what I mean by that so the argument was here's a sign bar for the sake of argument instead of a sign plate I need to set up a four degree angle on, on a five inch sign bar or sign plate well I can get my calculator out right and I can take four sign times five equals 348 and seven tenths so, you know, in the business I was in, 349 would probably be close enough just to save time today. So let's go over here and get a 149 gauge block and a 200 gauge block. Now, unless you had your own set of gauge blocks, that's one part of the equation, you might go over to the gauge block set in the grinding room and those two are missing, or one of them is, okay? And there we have it. Four degrees is set accurately using gauge blocks. Or you could go like this, just come over here and pick out the four degree block and you're set again. All right, so I have these one through uh, 15 and then uh, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 at the end here. So I don't need to do this for several angles. You guys kind of get the point here, right? That's why I made these myself and these are all hardened O1 and that's why they have a hole in the middle of them uh, for uh, when we uh, quench them with a, we'd have a wire in that hole to put it in the oil. So that's what the purpose of those were. And uh, again, when you're grinding electrodes constantly eight, 10 hours a day, they were big time savers, as you can see. Uh, ringing up gauge blocks isn't a big deal, as long as you have your own set and they're all there, but this is still faster, there's no argument, okay? So, and like I said, I always learned so much Staying after work and building my own tools, grinding this stuff, leaving the right amount of stock on it for heat treat and grind after a heat treat. And, uh, you know, it's funny the more experience you get, right? You guys have done this before. When you first start out, you leave way too much. Then you start getting a little more ballsy. And sometimes you take it a little too close. But you end up, uh, you know, learning how to mill things really square so you don't need to leave that much grinding stock. I used to leave about three thousandths per side to grind to allow for some warpage in the heat treating process. So that's just me. Now, uh, some other angular tips and things I used throughout the years. You know, you've probably all seen these and I got this in, these in an auction. I didn't bring the whole set home. That's just your basic uh, angle block, right? This one says five degrees on it. It's homemade. It's, just, it's got the hole in it for the, to dip it in the oil after heat treat it. And uh, the thing, these are fine for inspection and everything, but they're not really good for setups because no matter how you put your piece on there, it's hard to get, there's no stop. So your, your piece can ride up and down. But you know, if you're just checking an angle on a part in the mill and you want to check in five degrees, these, these work just fine. I'll, I'll put a magnet on it and that'll work. But I came up with these years ago and I, I know they sell them commercially now, but uh, these go half degree through 15 and 20, 25, uh, 35, uh, 45, 30, 40, 45. These are angle blocks with a step on them. Now these are great. And uh, I used to use these uh, a lot more after I made them. I didn't even have to set up a sign bar or a sign, uh, five inch uh, sign plate or magna sign, I guess we would call it. I would just simply do this. Now what would that look like? Well, let's grab a grinding vise. If my microphone will let me get over that far. Here we have a grinding vise. 
And what's beautiful about these, you want to grind a five degree angle, no more gauge blocks, nothing. You would just take this, set it in your vise, okay, like that. And this is an example, I think I have a piece of graphite, but we'll just use this parallel. You could set that in there. Let's do it from this way so you can see it a little better, camera angle. So again, here's a five degree uh, stepped angle block right here. And that just goes in your vise. You can put a stop in here in the screw, on this threaded hole, or I, a lot of times they just use a magnet, okay? And up against the stop, set it, grind it, pull it out, put another piece in, and you're good to go because you've always got that stop here versus this thing where you can ride up and down the angle with nowhere to stop. So those were very, uh, uh, probably the best thing I ever built. Somewhere, I might even find it at the end of this video, um, I turned that in as a suggestion in like 1982. I think I was awarded either 35 or $50 for that idea. And we made six sets for the shop. And they even said when I was done, you did make a set for yourself, right? I said, no. <laughs> so I stayed after work and built my own set. Served me well for about uh, 35 years now. And uh, as you can see, they go up all the way up to uh, 45 degrees. And again, uh, you can buy these now. Uh, I'm sure you can find them used on eBay. But if you grind a lot of angles, these are really, really nice to have. All right, so uh, the last part of the lesson, if I can find a piece of graphite here, you're gonna really get a kick out of this. And maybe you've done this all your life. Maybe you think I'm crazy, but uh, let's find some graphite and I'll be right back. So this final part of today's lesson will probably give me some sort of a flashback experience, I think. Uh, again, back in the mold making days, I used to grind a lot of electrodes. And uh, here's a piece of graphite I happen to have in the house, half inch square, okay? Now it would be very typical for me to, uh, of course we had to calculate all our, we would call them burns or cuts back then, and a feature in a mold. Might, uh, let's just call it, wanted a, a pocket, um, half inch square, with five degrees per side draft on it. So the way we would do it is get our can of trusty Marsh stencil ink. And stencil ink, ink is a very light, um, unless you you know don't know how to use a spray paint, uh, you just put a light coat on this electrode with your stencil ink. So I won't do that on camera because I don't want to get uh, the uh, lens full of paint. All right, so uh, there's our electrode and it's got a nice thin coat of stencil ink on it white paint all right now what we do is we set the world's coolest height gauge and the main reason i bought this on ebay uh, several years ago was that uh, all the tool makers that i really worshipped back then had had one of these and this is called the greist micro height gauge um talk about a conversational uh, starter but anyways i'm getting off point here aren't i so what you can do is gently scribe, um, uh, set this at half inch, 0.500. And if you just gently scribe a very thin scribe line, let's see if we can see those. That one's the best one you can see on camera. All right, all right, you'd be surprised now, I know. Spray paint, really, a scribe line? You'd be shocked with a thin coat of stencil ink and a thin scribe line, when you grind that draft angle on there, how close you can get it. You'd be shocked. And maybe I'll take that into work on Monday and for a follow-up, I'll grind five degrees on there, up a half inch and we'll check in the comparator. So here's my five degree angle block. And all we would do is set that up on our grinder, just like that. See if we can get a better view of that. And what I probably would have done back then is either put a stop in this hole, but for today's purposes, we'll just put a magnet on there. And you could just take this and bump it up against the step on the angle block and then up against the magnet. Tighten, grind until you just uh, make the line disappear. All right, loosen, flip. Up against the stop, tighten, grind, and of course it's graphite, you can take the whole thing at once. 
absolutely and you can grind electrodes all day with this system so again uh, a little bit going on here and just want to recap here what we did was a piece of graphite five degree step block height gauge scribe lines on uh, very thin on a thin coat of stencil ink and uh, again I think I'll take this to work on Monday and grind it we'll follow up so there's some uh, information for you kind of a blast from the past for me uh, I used to love grinding electrodes and I would tell you I probably learned as much about tool making and mold making in the EDM department as I did anywhere else in the shop due to the fact we had to calculate our own electrodes and all that good stuff and I just wanted to end the uh, final printed version of the tools of the trade calendar for 2020 uh, these are all vintage 1935 Sterrett tools that I restored from a 1935 Sterrett tools catalog. That's what uh, this old girl looks like. Nice piece of work here. Uh, very old, but all these great drawings. So I picked out 17 of my favorite ones and turned them into a 2020 uh, year at a glance calendar. And I also was uh, in the restoring restoration mode, I should say and uh, had this 1947 Lufkin Tools catalog and restored this beautiful skeleton view of a set of ought to one mics. So you can get the calendar, you can get a special for both. Uh, just go to the toolanddieguy.com 2020 calendar. So I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, chock full of information today. Uh, I will tell you, there goes my calculator. I hope I don't need that later. Uh, my hands are clean now, but we had a malfunction with the, with the stencil ink. That's what happens when you don't use a can for 10 years. I couldn't get the get it to spray and I knew it was full. So of course I was out in the garage and I finally got it to work. And of course, you know, when you finally get the spray can to work, I had paint everywhere, but we're clean again. So uh, again, uh, ch check out the uh, toolanddieguy.com. Cool poster, cool calendar. We'll see you on the next video.